I have, I now have a winch mounting zone with D-rings. D-ring mounts, let's put it that way, D-ring mounts. Now that we have that out of the way, we need to deal with this. What we need to do, we're on the driver's side here, we need to remove this excess material so we have a flat surface. As you can see, there's an indentation here. We need to cut it all the way down. I'm going to go from the center of this slot and just kind of just straight down to fit uh, my flat bar in there. And it's going to be tight, especially because there is a nut strip in there. You can't, I don't know if you can see it. Let me, uh, let me get the flashlight out here. You see the nut strip in there? All right. So, we're going to do this with the cutoff wheel. There we go. All opened up. Now we seem to have a slight little problem up here. Somebody at Chrysler decided to put a push pin there. <laughs> Guess what we'll to get that guy out of the way. Okay. We got our piece of flat bar here. You know what? I'm just gonna put it in as far as it'll go. Yeah, that looks nice. <laughs> See what we can do with getting this to stay here. And we'll go up underneath here and mark our holes. Hey, hey. Alright, as you see, I actually had to go up past this, this radius so I can sit up tight up against there. Now you will notice that I'm not tight up against this side over here. That is because of that big hole, that hole, the one that has the raised lip on the inside. Now I said I was going to avoid, avoid that, but I can push this bar in as far as I can, I'm going to. So what I need to do now is take my paint marker, give me a mark there, get a circle there. Right there, there, and there. That's the hole's marked on the inside on this plate. I'll take a hole saw and cut that big hole out, and we'll drill and tap uh, 3 8 16 pitch SAE for them for mounting holes. I may bump them up to half inch, don't know yet. But for now, the 3 8 should suffice. Da! <laughs> it's a little difficult. We have our EVAP canister here. It was difficult to get the marker in there. But I believe I got what I need. This extra actually is butting up against something inside, which I believe might be the power steering go center punch these guys and go drill them now uh, you've seen guys using a drill for us before so <laughs> for all intents and purposes I'm gonna shut you guys off you guys don't need to see this all right through the magic of YouTube video there we go my hole my hole saw cut started cutting large which is good the only hole saw I have so it looks about the right size so hopefully let's see what we got huh let me uh, put you guys on pause let me get my hardware and we'll crawl down down below 
Now, as bumpers go, that's fine if you're going to mall crawl. Yeah. Strong enough. Got four bolts in there. Real good. Actually, up, up against the power steering. Power steering box. But, not good for an off-road bumper. We need a tie-in. We need another plate on this side with this pattern that will come down and go underneath here and bolt through that bolt and that one over there. Now, if you're wondering, this is a lower radiator mount. See, there is radiator hose. Tied up against the top. Tied up against this side. All right. Following morning. Just got done putting the hazard side in. Let's go get our. Where is it? Oh, it's stupid. There. Right, right, right there. That. Our winch mount. Bring it over here and size it up. We're going to probably be using either the floor jack or some jack stands or something to hold the weight up. Okay. That's our, our first initial fit up of our winch mount. It would appear our initial measurements were incorrect. There's not a inch difference from side to side. There's only half an inch. So, my half inch plate that I had bought to go in there ain't gonna work. Luckily, I have some smaller quarter inches that I'm gonna tack weld right now. They're gonna get tack welded here so we can pinch this all together. I know it looks a little more than a quarter of an inch, but trust me, trust me on this. For now, temporarily, I'm going to bolt through each end. Put two bolts in, just so I can drive it, drive it around, you know. <laughs> the last thing you want is this thing to fall off or just drive around with these things hanging out because let me tell you, I went, went for breakfast this morning and I couldn't park where I normally park, which is right near the walkway because those stick out and the last thing I need is somebody to catch themselves on that. Now if they catch themselves on those you're stupid. <laughs> Alright, well neither here nor there right now. Let me go finish cleaning up my plates and uh, tack, get the welder out. We'll tack weld those guys up and uh, we'll bring you back then. Okay, we're tacked in. Now I made it even across the top. I kept it a little shy, a little shy up here. But you'll notice we're not even. Meaning this plate right here don't line up with the edge. Which is good because we have weld on the inside that we need to clear so this will give us a little bit of clearance now I did the other side also so uh, let's set our winch plate up in here and see what we see what we look like all clamped in now, like I said we had some differences in the measurement from the body out to the end of the mounting plate so what I did was to compensate for that, I measured from the body to the end of our D-ring mounts. And we are within a 30 second, which, awesome. I do need to remove this lip as the lip and the weld here do not allow the winch to sit nicely in here. So what I'm going to be using, after I cut that off, I'll be using 3 16th angle iron and put it across there. I 
but while we're here oh man I'm gonna dread this part I'm gonna dread it something fierce let's go get the winch fit it in there see how we look see if we have to make any adjustments with our our, our links to give us some room here whoo yeah that heavy as you can see we are literally up against if you're wondering that's the loop it spun around we can however come forward a little bit if we need Okay, we're gonna dial a quarter of an inch more. That gives us a little, a little extra here. All the measurements from the from the unit body are right. I step back. We look pretty level. I'm going to uh, drill and tap some holes for a couple bolts on each side. So right now I can I will be able to remove this if I had to. All right. So oh, here we go. Bolted in. Well, drilled and tapped. Ran bolts all the way through. Completely tapped all the way through. Only reason there's a nut on that one that bolt a little on the long side didn't want to look really screwy. So oh, same thing over there. So, for today, this is going to be it. I'm going to spray some brake cleaner on here, get all the oils off from tapping, and uh, throw a little quick coat of black paint on there. All right, there she is, all nice and pretty black. And I did get a little bit of overspray on the body. I'll take care of that with some, some brake cleaner. But... Right now, I'm not worried about. Oh, well, you're gonna be welding on that. You shouldn't be painting it. It's getting sandblasted. All right. When it's getting time to get welded up, it'll be sandblasted. There he is. Let's start. Well, that's the end of part two in our bumper build series for Double D. I'd like to thank you guys for stopping by and tooling around with us. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. Please click the subscribe button. Um, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, any I would have done it this ways, I like those comments. Please feel free to put them in the comment box below. Now, before I melt away here from the sweltering heat we're going to do a sign off so uh for every day off road i'm mike should catch you guys later it was upper 90s today Man, I'm sweating a little bit. I probably probably look like crap too. Well, hang on, I look like crap before, so I probably look a little worse now. <laughs> you know, I've been to so many times. You think I would be able to get this right? You know, I'm not even talking to anybody over here. I'm just facing this way talking to myself. Sorry.